And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Golgari Stompy. The thing I really like about this deck is just curving out into Vivian Arcbow Ranger. I played this deck quite a bit at the beginning of the M20 standard season, as y'all know, and Vivian here is just one of my favorite Planeswalkers from that, and just a really underrated Planeswalker, in my opinion. You don't see too much Vivians. Uh, you see some, but not not too much, and I think that uh, a lot of people don't really realize the power of this card. Uh, giving that plus one ability is just awesome. Putting two counters, um, you get to distribute them however you want. Uh, give them to two different creatures, give them to one creature, but then also giving those creatures trample. That is huge when you're talking about huge creatures. So when you have cards like Steel Leaf Champion, pumping this up and giving it trample is incredible. Same with Rotting Regisaur. Like, you know, you play Rotting Regisaur as a 7-6, then you play the Arcbow Ranger, put two counters on it, make it a 9-8 with trample. It's just going to end people's days really fast. It's just going to kill people. Like, they can't can't chump block a 9-8 Trampler very efficiently at all. Uh, same with Knight of the Ebon Legion. You know, put some counters on Knight of the Ebon Legion. They can already get more counters. Plus, you get to use that activated ability to give it Death Touch. If you have a creature with Death Touch and Trample, that basically just means it's unblockable. Because <laughs> all you have to do is just assign one damage to whatever it's blocking, and the rest trample over, because the, the one Death Touch there. So this, this deck can hit really hard with Knight, Regisaur, Steel Leaf, Vivian... You may remember the last couple of times I've played, or like basically every time I've played this, I've played it as kind of a Vivian tribal deck with some three mana Vivians and even like a five mana Vivian. And I'm moving away from those and getting another creature in here with Barkhide Troll. I, um, I had like Growth Chamber Guardian also in here, which I thought was a little slow. But I, So I have like some two mana removal that we didn't have before with Legion's End Trophy and then also Barkhide Troll, which I like. I like this Barkhide Troll. I think it's a pretty decent card, just usually being a two mana, three, three for the most part, but then, you know, you get to pump it up with Vivian. It can have its, like, pseudo hexproof and everything. Um, so, yeah, going a little bit lower to the ground and also having some more interaction in the deck that we didn't have before with the Legion's Ends main deck and everything. And then I put the put the Vivians over in the sideboard because they're really good against control, but not necessarily that great against a lot of decks. You know, there's most the majority of your decks are going to be non-control that you play against. So we're just trying to curve out more. Um so yeah, hopefully we draw Vivian Arcbow Ranger a bunch. Hopefully we get to curve into it a bunch. Um, that's our plan. All right, so let's go ahead and play over in ranked uh, with our deck. We're going to play like four or maybe five matches. See how it's going and everything. Kind of want to change the sleeve. Hmm. Maybe we'll go with the Vivian sleeve. Maybe that'll help us draw Vivian more. Is that a thing? I think that could be a thing. That's probably a thing. We'll see. If we if we don't draw Vivian at all, we get to blame the sleeves. If we if we draw Vivian's a bunch, then we get to also uh, or we give credit to the sleeve. I guess I was gonna say also blame the sleeve, but give credit to the sleeve. So either way, we get to test it out, and whatever happens these few matches, then we can make um, a like proclamation. That's always what happens whenever you put the planeswalker on your sleeve. All right, well, it looks like looks like it works perfectly. Put Vivian here. Draw Vivian. Yeah, I have just been Chandra for a while. I guess I haven't really changed the profile in a while. This is so close to being perfect. If this was just Woodland Cemetery, if one of these two was Woodland Cemetery, this hand would be absolutely perfect. I think we still just go Forest Lanoir Elf and hope we draw one of our nine untapped black sources. We have four Overgrown Tomb, four Woodland Cemetery, and one Swamp. We're playing number 103 when we're in Diamond. That's not too close there. No, not really, Vincenzo. Nope. 
I mean, I like streaming more. And staying home. <sighs> so close. So let's play in the Rotting Regisaur. It just hits so hard. If you show remorse, I'll show distress. I'll protect you. This is hardly my worst defeat. So, looks like Jeskai Control, but you don't always see Azorius Gilgade and Archer Horoska in Jeskai Control, though. So, I definitely want to get the Knight out of Clarion range. You know, so obviously we're playing Vivian here. We're going to discard Temple of Malady, play Vivian. Um, attack with everything. I need to put one counter on the knight. And then I guess I put the other counter on the land war elf. Okay, well. With the arc never mind, so this is this is just uh five color golos. This will be fun to watch. All right. Do not have time wipe. I could have discarded the Steel Leaf Champion to have uh, and just played Temple, and then I would have been able to have the Shifting Ceratops the next turn if I would have minus five the Vivian, but the Shifting Ceratops wasn't lethal anyway. All right, so against five color Golos, what do we want to do? Probably want these duresses. I don't want Ripjaw Raptor or Galta, because those are just kind of some overextend cards. Maybe not really even the Bark Hide Troll. So like, so this is what we're going with right now. I kind of want some more Planeswalkers. So if we cut these Bark Hide Trolls, get another Legion's End in here, get a couple of Viv little Vivians, and get a, get a big Vivian. Don't need to go too hard on the Planeswalkers. I think one... No, let's cut a tro Let's cut a troop for another trophy. Okay. I think two trophies is good enough. I'm trying to do my sideboarding faster so we don't... Don't get to the, the sound bug at all. All right, well, we're two for two with having Vivian Arcbow Ranger in our opening hand. So it turns out switching to the Vivian Sleeves is the way to go. 
scientifically proven to have Vivian in your opening hand every game, 100% of the time. We're going to go ahead and, and stop. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I shouldn't say that we're going to stop the uh, um, the testing so that, you know, if we'd stop it, it'd be two out of two, so it's 100% of the time. So we stop taking samples, but maybe I shouldn't say that so that we can... Cause maybe if I say that, then we won't continue to draw Vivian's. So yeah, Chupacabra's job is to take out Golos and not give them a land like Trophy does. Steel Leaf is nice, does not get blocked by zombie tokens. We're hoping to draw land here. Come on, deck, draw land. No land. That's why we need that land last turn. But perfect hand for our opponent. Rejuvenator with time wipe, that combo. Perfect hand. I couldn't quite get my Vivian in play first. So no land put in play. So now they got four spells in hand. No, that's a problem. That really hurts. That was my try to attack for a lot quickly card and also not be able to block get blocked by zombie tokens card. So now we just gotta pump up the Paradise Druid, I suppose. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. My my how you've grown. Yeah, they have like another baffling end. This could be really bad for us. Yeah, I've always liked Chupacabra too. I know not, not everybody likes Chupacabra. Some people think that it's... It holds back other creatures and stuff and it's not a... And therefore it's not a that good of a design, but I've always liked Chupacabra. <laughs> yeah, this Paradise Jury is getting swole. It's going to have trample and everything. You've made a dangerous enemy. So leaving up a green mana.
Which that circuitous route is really good too, though. Get out of the way if I were you. Doesn't look great for us. Now it really doesn't look great. But I, I think I like our chances game three. My opponent had... A really, really good quality hand here with having like the, the turn four, um, turn four time wipe on the play. I think if we have I'm not gonna let them devout decree that. I think if we have the same hand we had here um, on the like if we have the same hand that we had here on the play next next game. I really like our chances. Only I think we would have got so that Vivian far. down a lot earlier. And be able to do this extra damage. Play this other Vivian instead of the Chupacabra. Vivian. I didn't really think about Vivian being able to kill Golos. That is really nice. Vivian, Vivian killing Golos and Krasis. I don't have like a ton of creatures now though for these other Vivians. Still three for three. Always have a Vivian in hand whenever you play the Vivian sleeves. We've also had Lanoir Elf in hand every game. That's helped. I may have too many of this card in my deck right now. I don't know. Maybe not. All right, let's see how turn two Steel Leaf treats us. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Matthew. Oh, come on. Turn two Baffling End? That is not lucky for us. We're just going to have to chomp. So I'm just going to have to discard the Vivian. I do have double Sun Petal Grove.
I wish I could cast both of these cards. So casting a trophy gets them a 2 2. I don't really see us winning from here, honestly. I guess I'm going to have to trophy the Field of the Dead. I guess that's actually what I'm going to have to do is trophy Field of the Dead. Can't really let them just get a whole bunch of tutus with me not having trample or anything. And I'm passing. I'm not attacking here. Yeah, trophying the baffling end doesn't help us too much. That's a really good card for them. That lets them they can pair that up with Krasis and maybe they find field. That digs him closer to a field, though. That was a really good card. Rejuvenator is just always a good card. Mm. Speaking of good cards. Well, unfortunately, we are out of this one now. And Knight is not going to beat an active Golos. Darn. These rejuvenators have just been so insane. The, the ramp and chump block that it's provided. Well, we have a... We have a shot again, of course. A trophy was perfect. We have a shot again now. If I draw one more land, I get to double activate Knight. Never mind. So much for us having a shot. Just draw six. 
and put a 12-12 into play. And I'm at 12. That deck's hard to beat with my little mid-range decks. Both of our losses are, are to that, that deck, and it's a hard one to beat with mid-range decks. But our, our deck still looks pretty good overall. Really that, re that Rejuvenator getting the chump block like on the 7-6 the earlier on in the game. That Rejuvenator. Such a good card. I don't think that's a correct statement. And we did really good with the Kalia and Friends deck. We just lost to the Golos deck where I didn't sideboard game two. But we beat everything else. I wouldn't say that just the metagame means the midrange is really bad. I wouldn't, wouldn't really say that. The Kalia deck did really well there, but like... Let's, let's just go Barkai Troll. Um, you know, we got game... Yuck. We got game one, but uh, they just had good hands there. Games two and three. Let's rejuvenate a card. <laughs> Still such a good roadblock. Well, with us having legions then, that changes things. We can more safely kill the Golos. I was I was planning on destroying the Field of the Dead again. Still better to kill this thing. They could still just have like Krasis. We want a Legion's End. Just not letting them get all these. Well, they have Basic Swamp. That was not something I. That's not expected. Basic Swamp to be able to activate Golos. That was not expected. It's 
So if my opponent would have just float, floated mana with the Field of the Dead, then they could have activated Golos after getting the basic Swamp. Of course, all they need is another untapped land to be able to activate Golos. It's a good place to see Krasis. No, I don't. I've I've never been impressed with the Kethis deck myself. I haven't really seen it do too much. Every time I play against it, like it's oh, you know, okay, but I haven't really struggled that much against it with like a, just a really wide variety of decks in it. I did lose one game to the Kethis deck one time. They won on turn three. Like, I don't remember if they were on the play or not, but they just played the Diligent Excavator on two and then Kethis on three and then just won from there. But just playing like Moxes that, and like those milled over. Like one Mox with the Kethis and milled over like the, the correct four cards to exile to and play like another mox or something. I don't remember, but it was pretty crazy. Alright, so they got one of each basic. And two basic islands. So lots of basics over here. Because they're tire tired of getting Field of Ruined. Alright, well, if they play Time Wipe, I'm dead, obviously. I'm gonna hope they don't have Time Wipe. Please, no Time Wipe. I would like to test a new hypothesis with you. I know I noted this somewhere. So they could have gotten Golos back to stay alive. Yuck. So now they had two spells in hand. They didn't put anything into play off of that last growth spiral. Let me aid your research. Most all their spells are really powerful, so that's not ideal. All right, gotta hope they whiff. No Nexus. Gotta hope they whiff here. No Nexus. This is it. Land, land, land. No! Ugh, double to fairy. 
This isn't a fight you can win. Let's try this. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Don't worry, I got this. So two basic forests also. Lots and lots of basics over there. Seven basics. Troop is good. Troop is good. Nexus in hand. I think that's game. Yeah, two mana realize the game's over. That's more like it. Yep. Cause I just So, okay, if you're if you're the opponent, what they should be doing during is upkeep cast the Nexus um, before they draw, because they just have another chance of drawing that Nexus. Okay, they they whiffed there. They gotta whiff one more time. They only have 15 cards left in library, though, so if they're playing four Nexuses, um, it's pretty unlikely they whiff again. Yeah, they're kind of out of lands, looks like. Out of lands-ish. There was already eight lands in the graveyard before. They only grabbed one. It's all about if they have infinite turns or not. So if they don't, if they don't get to take infinite turns here. We got a good shot. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Seek and find. No, yeah, they're they're like out of land, so I wasn't worried about scape shift. No. <laughs> oh, they didn't miss. It was gonna be tough to miss, you know, with twelve cards or whatever. But they have infinite turns. Cannot miss anymore. They just have to use Tamiyo, just has to grab lands from the graveyard and replay. Yeah, I'm not going to miss Nexus one bit. I'm not going to miss Nexus, I'm not going to miss Elvish Rejuvenator. But especially next, yep, not going to be missing those at all. Standard will be better without Nexus. It's just not non necessary card to have. We don't really see time wipes from them. I guess I should have looked at their graveyard a little more to see how many time wipes they had. Masker Girl is not any good in this match. You don't want to kill your own creatures to kill some of their. Um, I mean, I guess I guess because they're playing Scape Shift, that could be useful then. But you don't, you can't really afford to kill your creatures. Um, cause, and just kill and kill their all their two twos because then you won't be able to uh, win the race. Like you won't be able to. Finish the game off in time. I 
I'm gonna try keeping this Galta in here. Why not? Let's let's actually try keeping it in here. See what happens. I'm gonna try that over one of the bark hide over uh Yeah. It's really rough mulliganing lands and land war elf. Land war elf being like my best card. So I need mana and land or off counts. Getting rid of the Legion's End, because Legion's End's a card that in this matchup we want to play like in the really late game. But whenever you start with Rotting Regisaur, you're not going to really be able to keep cards in hand for the really late game. It's the kind of thing that you just have to top deck. And so getting rid of the card that only works in the really late game whenever we have we're gonna have to discard our hand anyway. Depending on how our land land draws go, maybe we get to get Vivian Reed down, but we weren't gonna be using that card. Why is it always Elvish Rejuvenator on turn three? Six games in a row against this deck. And all six games has been Elvish Rejuvenator on turn three. All six games. It's like if they don't have a Ultra Junior on turn 3, it's a mulligan. But they haven't been mulliganing. So going with the Steel Leaves because they don't get blocked by Rejuvenator. Really hoping no Sweeper and really hoping that we'd find this third land. Alright, Punish Factory. Take care. Well, Steel Leaves are lethal next turn. We don't really have to worry about Scape Shift or um, anything like that. Or Circuitous Route or anything, because two power creatures do not kill Steel Leaf. I just don't want to see Time Wipe, and I don't want to see, like, I don't want to see a Sweeper like that. There we go, and I didn't want to see a Golos either. Yeah, they would have gone land plus circuitous route. Like, that would have been great for me. Circuitous route didn't save them. All right, game three. We just had turn three steel leaf, turn four steel leaf, turn five steel leaf. They bounced it. And just four attacks with the champions. Do we get black mana to duress? That would be really nice. No. Looks like my opponent's got a lot of black mana over there for their deck. Seven for seven with that card. I 
I really like the op re reprint. I think opt is a good card to have in standard. It's a, it's just a good um, glue piece. This is not ideal. The Steely Champion's our only hope. It's unlikely to come through, but it's our only hope. If I could choose only one card to be re reprinted from the rotating sets, what would it be? I think I would say Nicol Bolas the Ravager. All right, Steel Leaf got there. Very surprisingly. You know, our opponent only needed like a, a Golos or something like that to really start stabilizing, but got fortunate there. Yeah, Angrath was the card. I, I was definitely thinking about Angrath. Definitely thinking about saying Angrath. I like that one a lot. There's already enough Planeswalkers in Standard, though. I like Nicol Bolas the Ravager a lot. I missed that card. Actually, no, never mind. Let me change my answer. Blood Sun. It's got to be Blood Sun. So the land war all for Legion's End. I'll go Legion's End. Temple of Malady. Could be a lot of different decks. We really want to draw third land. Like this is our our perfect start is turn two riding register, turn three Vivian. No, this is a Legion's End matchup for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a Legion's End matchup. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's all we get. We get two lands and a land war elf. That's that's all we get with this deck. No more, no less. Well, real good turn for us. With my opponent not doing anything on turn three, looks like they're missing white mana. Civilization has crept too far. Tear it down. I'd get out of the way if I were you. They if they block land war off, they take lethal, so. We can just attack on out. Alright. It's a lot of pressure there. Turn two riding Regisaur. 
If you don't have some good interaction, we're ending the game quickly. Not Plague Mayor. All right, so we definitely want uh, removal spells here. Yeah, no, the minus was not lethal either. Minus was 10 damage, and they were at 11. So ticking up meant that if for some reason they had a sweeper the next turn, which I wasn't expecting, but if they did for some reason, we would have been able to minus 5 Vivian and grab a creature like Ceratops. But honestly, we kind of needed more mana for that anyway. All right, here we go. Okay, Radical Guru, you would, you would choose Twilight Prophet? Ugh. What What other card, what would y'all choose? Laster, thanks so much for the tier one sub. Thanks so much there, Laster. So yeah, what card would y'all choose if you could choose one card to in standard to be reprinted? It's about to rotate out. Militia Bug Militia Bugler. Okay, that's a good one. Chupacabra. Chart of course. Chart of course is a good one. Yeah, Ceratops is good. It's also just kind of four mana. And so I didn't want it as much. But no, Ceratops is good. Oh man. I miss me yeah, I missed me some spirit monger. That was a cool card. Journey to Eternity is a good one. Psychic Corrosion. Lyra. Teferi, Angrath, Cast Down, Drowned Catacombs. Just you just get just get like the one of the um, one of the buddy lands, but not the rest. It's Angrath for sure. Unclaimed Territory, Eldritch Reborn, Enigma Drake. Cabal Stronghold. Oh, Cabal Stronghold's a real good one. Yeah, they're they're the this is the Kethis deck. This is the four color Kethis deck. They don't have any basics. So we do have a free trophy here. Unless they just added a basic. Oh, it looks like they added a basic. I've never seen a basic in this deck before. Treasure map. A couple of people saying treasure map. That's good. Dire Fleet, Daredevil, Rekindling Phoenix. Phoenix is good too. Right on schedule. Aw. Yeah. Goreclaw and Lanawar, those are a couple of rough losses there. This might be a bad idea. Hmm. It's Taco Hero. Thanks, Taco Hero. Thanks for that resub. Keeping the hype going. That is sub number. 10 on the day. Hit that sub goal. Here we go. That is awesome. Got that sub goal. Thank you so much there, Taco Hero. 
I'll write that down. What we do with the sub goals is they count towards. All right, so they get to they can turn that into. Um, they count towards the next 12-hour stream, and so whenever we hit 20 total sub goals, we do a 12-hour stream to celebrate. That's sub goal number 13. All right, so it looks like my opponent's got this one. I kept a risky hand for sure. How many lands I had. But they can copycat this, exile, like, <clears throat> cat this and Mox Amber or something like that. They could just cast the Ruinous Blast. Azur! Thanks for keeping that hype going. Thanks so much, Azur. Or Azur. Probably Azur. Anyway, question, uh, what decks are looking good for Standard 2020? We, I just played that on Monday. Um, and the deck that I really liked the most was the Chandra Tribal deck. Did really well with the Chandra Tribal deck uh, in that event. And I've heard from a lot of people, other people doing really really well with that deck too. I have a little playlist though with the the three decks that I played for the standard 2020 on you on YouTube there. Um but I also made there's also a link in there to um if you, or if you just go to my stream decker page there's a Caval a mono red cavalcade deck. I know people liked that deck too. But I'll I'll play more of the event on uh, on Monday. So if you're playing the standard 2020 a bunch right now, and if you're having success with it, feel free to send me a deck list if you'd like to see me play it on Monday. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Yeah, it is a red control list. Yep, mono red control for sure. Cool. But yeah, so. Funky says they've had a lot of fun with the Chandra deck. Sausage said that played against the tri Chandra Tribal a few times. And they've been liking it. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't know exactly what's looking. I mean, yeah. So without without knowing exactly what's going to be good next rotation, I'd say that a couple of things we haven't seen any cards that stop field of the dead at all yet and so that's that's a problem so so you know like field of the dead is probably going to like for what we've seen so far field of the dead looks like it's going to be prominent and also just like sultai sultai kind of has everything some of the new cards some of the best cards from the new set are sultai colored i don't know exactly what the Sultai deck will look like, but there's there's just tons of really good Sultai cards. You know, I'm gonna just cut Paradise Druids and play bar all Bark High Trolls instead. The Paradise Druids didn't look spectacular there. But thanks, Balding Yeti. Naya Feather is not sketchy at all. Yeah, I think Naya Feather is good. Leading with Land of War lets us go Knight plus Barkhide next turn. If I just like play the Knight, then I'm just playing Barkhide. Which gets us to the same result of having those two in play. And we would have been able to attack for one, but now we just have the land war off in play also. 
Love to draw Vivian. We haven't had a Vivian in our opening hand over the last few games. Just remember that. Where's our Vivians? We, we got these Vivian sleeves and everything. Where's our Vivians at? Yes, let's go! Bleh. Let's cry. Let's look for something good. Eh. That's not really that good. Thank you so much for that resub there and said, I think Naya Feather is going to be great. It's been doing really well for me in the event. Well, there we go. All right. I'm known for my excellent timing. Found Spark Hydro. Trust me, I have a plan. Darn. What are all these lands doing? Why are there so many lands? We will meet again. <laughs> yeah, the the storm count hasn't reset in a few days. I don't. So yeah, MTG bot is off. I don't. Vivian. Yeah. We did it. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. <laughs> Stomping time. We did it. No. Hmm. I want to remove that counter and give Vivian hexproof. I'm gonna love holding this grudge. Let's slow Darn. this down. No, no Bark High Troll gaining hexproof does not cause the Sky Tether to fall off. Sky Tether is already on the Bark High Troll. Hexproof means you can't be targeted, but the the Sky Tether is no longer targeting the Bark High Troll like that. So now nah, it doesn't really work. Now what? Well darn, I was about to be able to minus five the Vivian to grab a shifting Ceratops as well. I guess if I would have attacked them, I would have had eleven damage. Represent or would have had you know nine damage represented here if they have absolutely nothing, but can't really imagine my opponent has absolutely nothing. Hmm. You would make an excellent informant for my study. No tail should be discarded. Hmm. Hooray. That was a really good quality draw step. We had to draw spells eventually. Yeah, the the thing about keeping all these planeswalkers off the battlefield though is that I wanna the reason why I'm like attacking like even like those Teferis and like Tamiyo is, you know, a better planeswalker, but still darn it. It's about Urza's Ruinous Blast. So yeah, Fibblethip being a two mana legend turns on Urza's Ruinous Blast. That's not good. Okay, no Ruinous Blast, good. So Lazav's gonna turn into Lazav turns into Kethis.
Is it even good to attack here? Because they they block, you know, like one like you know, land war all for chupacabra. They block here. They take two. My creature dies because this this is cat this round. That this is a three four. So then Fibblethip dies. So then Fibblethip in the in over here is like a good card. Like it just turns their, it helps turn their Kethis on. Basically, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, thanks, Rocko Guru. Yeah, I think I still do it. No, maybe not. No, I'll just pass. Because they would be able to just recast that Fibblethip from the graveyard, you know, if they exile like Kethis plus Teferi. They would just be able to recast Fibblethip, just put it back out here. Like they would have just chump blocked, they would have just put it right back. It would have drawn another card. So I don't think it was worth two damage to let them draw a card, and also I kill one of my creatures. So it was like me kill a creature. And they they draw a card and take two damage. That's not not a good enough trade. Joda. Make a Joda deck for Throwback Thursday. Anybody have any ideas of what to do with Joda? Anybody have what should we be playing with Joda? See how like easy the Golos decks activate five mana. Like it's, it's not too difficult to activate five mana. Five different colors of mana. Oh wow. Wow, what a turn for my opponent. Triple Mox Amber in there. I guess they don't really have other stuff in their graveyard right now though. Oh, definitely an Omniscient deck. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, this may be game. That was another really great mill. I don't know. I don't know. It's, no, it's not. I don't know. They have four Mox Ambers they get to play. It depends on like how good this Excavator is, I guess. If they want, they can just exile like the two creatures and keep the four Mox Ambers. Oh, they're keeping three Mox Ambers. I wish I could just like pass turn and it doesn't give me priority every single thing. But it does. Yeah, this this is the 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 shift click thing. Or control shift. The problem is the Bark Hide Troll. I could just... Alright, so we're gonna pump. Alright. I'm just getting rid of the counter from the Bark Hide Troll. Just conceding that counter just so we don't have to click on every single thing.
Because, yeah, the Bark Hide Troll is the problem. No, my opponent can't time out. They got it. Yep. Darn. That was some really good milling over by them with hitting all four of those mox ambers there when they had nothing in the graveyard. Ugh. You know, they cast. You know, like the Teferi or whatever, and then with the Excavator is just double Mox Amber. Lots of combo decks. We've played against four combo decks in a row now. All three matches this league have been combo. I, I do count the Golos... Nexus Texas combo basically because all they're trying to do is just take infinite turns with Nexus. Alright, not combo. Lieutenant. So obviously I'm attacking with Steely Champion. It's just do I want to attack with Ripjaw Raptor also? What do they have? Their blocks have to. They have to trade either Lieutenant or Knight away. Oh no no no! Oh no! I guess I guess not. I meant to cast Galta first. Yeah, I meant to cast Galta first, so I guess I'm not attacking. Alright, good enough. Our creatures went big. Am I supposed to play Masker Girl? No, so what am I supposed to be taking out? I don't know what my last card I'm supposed to be taking out anyway is. And then if I was going to bring in Masker Girl, what do we do? Yeah, Masker Girl is usually good against vampires. <clears throat> does kill all of my manic, you know, does kill all of my stuff, you know, like we're a really creature heavy deck. Also, what what in here is not good against vampires? Cuz I'm not really seeing it. Yeah, I could make yeah, I could just trim a paradise druid. No. Oh, that's too slow. We got the rope sound. 
Yeah, Regisaur gets chumped some. I mean, you know, we are a Vivian deck. Vivian makes Regisaur unchumpable. But yeah, without if we don't have Vivian and if we don't have removal, then they can chump Regisaur. Yeah, sideboarding went through. I had like thirty sec, uh, twenty nine seconds. So yeah, our sideboarding went through. So we're good there. Good choop, good choop. Drawing the land was really nice. They did not play a land last turn. Okay, not looking so bad for us. Hopefully they draw a land or two in a row. Hopefully they draw a land. I'm discarding trophy, of course. Well, now we're dead. It's not dead, dead. Close your eyes. Breathe. And listen to the sounds of the wild. It was my, my fighting. Claws, you're done. Now we're dead. So much for them bricking. Soaring into Sanctum Seeker. <laughs> I mean, MTG bots working, or like, kind of working. You know, it was there and everything, but. Maybe I'll play Masker Girl instead of Galta. Maybe that's how we fit Masker Girl in here. Maybe with all of their removal spells. Don't need Galta as much. Oh, yeah, Vivian's awesome. Now, Masker Girl's not too slow on the on the play, and especially how it's like our deck is pretty low to the ground anyway. Like we have a lot of interaction. Like we're we're gonna make it to turn five. It's not too slow.
But we almost stabilized that last game, even though they had triple one drop and then double removal spell after that. We still almost got there. And we were on the draw. We needed... Well, technically we did stabilize, but we need my opponent to not be able to get through for a couple of turns, but they drew cards that certainly let them get through. All right, so no removal as far as Ripjaw Raptor is concerned. It'd be nice to get the hand empty before Regisaur. Alright, so much for the no removal thing. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. This will be fun to watch. All right, come on, draw land, draw land. I'm a survivor. Ah, oh, Temple, you're killing me. <laughs> Stomping time. I don't expect to untap with the Rotting Regisaur, because I'm, you know, I'm blocking Knight of the Ebon Legion here, so I'm not expecting to untap with it. But just in case... Just in case I kept the Temple in hand to be able to discard. There we go. Alright, Vivian. Good job there, Vivian. All right, we are two and two. Let's get one more match here with Golgari Stompy. Let's break this tie. Hopefully go with a 3-2. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, that's... That was a really big land of war. I'm not sure if I was supposed to be attacking like that turn with the 3-3. Three, three. I don't know. That was a tough, tough call. I was thinking that like if they drew Black Manasaurus, got to play Sanctum Seeker, we'd be able to have the blocker. So they couldn't just play Sanctum Seeker and get the free attack with the trigger and everything. I don't know, that was close. Well, my opponent's not doing anything. There we go. All 
Already got a Paradise Druid for turn two. Don't need another one. Until my opponent played Divest on turn one and took Paradise Druid. This is Bant Flash. Whoa. Maybe it is Bant Flash. Hmm. I don't know how well they deal with 7-6s in play. We'll find out. I kind of want to go to attacks first and see if my opponent... Taps out, like plays like a seal away or something, and then try to play Vivian second main, even though we don't get the two counters on Vivian then. Like we don't get the two extra damage. I wanted to see if they would interact with combat first. So it made no difference. Vivian still got countered. It was the same. <laughs> yeah, the flash deck. Someone play Seal Away. Yeah, it's been a... It's not a card you see too often right now. So opponent felt pretty safe about tapping out since I was gonna have to discard my card in hand and it was just gonna be I was gonna be in top deck mode anyway. So we got two lethal attackers. Yeah, Knight was a good top deck. I guess because of Syncopate, I should play the Land War all first. But it's too late now. I didn't quite consider that. I'll protect you. Boo. Well, they're doing a good job staying alive. a bad idea. Uh. 
They're doing a pretty good job staying alive so far. Grace is pretty underrated. <clears throat> Certainly got punished for not shocking in the overgrown tomb earlier and playing a forest earlier. Oh, I've done the hero thing. Didn't have that black mana there for this other night. I don't have Veil of Summer. In my sideboard. I have Duress though. Like I it was kinda like a, a pick between one or the other. With like this creature deck, I didn't really have room for having a bunch of duress and a bunch of uh Veil of Summer. Um and so kinda looking at it, I chose to go with Duress it instead of Veil of Summer, which which I like, but does make us worse against the counter spell heavy deck. Right, getting that thing out of here so they don't get to keep bouncing knight. They're going to be able to gain three life at the very least with this Angel of Grace anyway. So it's not like I, I wasn't threatening lethal. Because even if I like attack them and I double pump and try to get to seven mana. Or like seven power then they just gain three life. All right, Duress, Vivian, uh, Sarah Tops. More trophies? I don't know if I need those trophies. I don't want two legions and three trophy. I'm gonna cut the legions ends. I mean, I'd like to have this Vivian in play, Vivian Reed, just. Un... Hmm. Unreliable that will be in play. Hmm. All right, trolls are gone. Here we go. Oh, man, are we going to get black mana? I sure hope so. It's really nice having Champion of the Wilds on turn two. 
where we can play a creature on their end step that they like you know have to counter then and then we can play on our turn also if we just get black mana this hand looks really nice We've had a whole lot of two land plus a land of Elf hands. We get the third land. Ugh. Not really that land. We need a, a black mana source. Let's see if you're worthy. You fight like a city brat. Okay, that worked out pretty well. No black mana in there. Wait, you think nature is kind? Cool. Is it better to have Paradise Druid in play than Steel Leaf? It may be, honestly. Have that black mana source in there. Paradise Druid with uh, Vivian is a pretty nice combo of like giving the Paradise Druid vigilance as far as attacking goes. I am not going to sit this one out. Bleh. No, I am not making this up as I go. The mysteries of life are endless. Do you want me to phase you out of time? Post-rotation quasi-duplicate deck? Yeah, I could do that. That's a pretty good idea. I haven't done that yet. That's a pretty good idea. I'll write that one down. Rotation proof quasi-duplicate. I do really like me some quasi-duplicate. Again. Bounce deputy. Here we go. We are speeding their deck up by giving them a land. What if they have no basics? Their only basic is in their hand. Their only two basics are in their hand. Darn it. They had basics. Have you ever lost a home? Okay, yeah. Balding Yeti is called Infinite Bolus with Otha Teferi Nickel Bolus. Here's one from two months ago. But yeah. Um, my turn. Let's see. Let's play this thing.
There is wonder in a blade of grass. Well, that's unfortunate. So I get to pump knight once and still cast the Rotting Regisaur. Um, I am priced into casting the Rotting Regisaur, of course, uh, before my next upkeep. It's not like something I can hold on to because of the other Rotting Regisaur. So I could play it right now and it doesn't get countered. But I think I'm more worried about a sweeper right now than a counter spell with already having all this other stuff out here. Oh, you're welcome, Bal Balding Yeti. And there's sweeper. Alright, well... Have what they needed. For the fallen. Can we get this game and head to game three? Just two cards over there. We still have one card exiled with Vivian. You know, like on our opponent's side, it looks like we have an extra card over here than what we don't have. Tear it down. Tear it all down. They could have settle. Starting over is the only way. We don't. We do know about Angel of Grace. May just be going with Angel of Grace. I guess they're gonna need more than that. Is the trample? I can still, I would still have the ability to trophy this ambusher after blocks. It doesn't matter if you if it blocks first, because of the trample dam like trample. It would still be able to do all five damage. So it's I, I can safely let that ambusher block there. I want to play these, especially if they're like just time wipe deck. Yeah, Champion of the Wilds was awesome there. Maybe I trim two Arcbow Rangers for two Vivian Reens. No, we'll, we'll trim one Chupacabra and one Ranger for two Vivians. <laughs> yeah, this is like a Vivian tribal deck. Vivian's really good, though. All 
All right, perfect. Turn two Vivian again. Turn two Vivian's obviously a lot better on the play than on the draw, because on the draw they can have a counter spell for it. Rude. I should be playing this prob first, probably. Let's tear this place apart. Let me show you what was lost. And then play temple. Afterwards. Uh, I've seen squirrels hit harder. You can still walk away. So they may attack Vivian with Counterspell Backup here, and we get the block with Ceratops. That's unfortunate. Hmm. I'm gonna love tearing this place to the ground. So if they have removal. You picked the wrong fight. Would you like to see what's left of For stuff? Steel Leaf. Strike now! Strike hard! They can you know maybe kill the Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Which I don't really want them to. Yeah, Vivian rescue Vivian to rescue Vivian. But yeah, I went with the Steel Leaf Champion there at like a time that they couldn't counter the Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, time Wipe? Looks like they're going Time Wipe. Um, still, this is the best block against Time Wipe. Don't let them pick the Deputy back up. We'll just take the, the two for one if they want. So I just took a two for one with that block. <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you. This will be fun to watch.
Guess might as well just lead with this thing. See what happens. Absorb. One soldier deck. All things begin and end. I'm not, I don't exactly know the, the question there. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Yeah, we're boggles now. Just hexproof, huge hexproof trampler with vigilance. We're boggles. Okay, I've... Okay, tomorrow... I won't be able to for tomorrow. I already have my plans for tomorrow. That being... Uh, uh, rank up... I can bounce the other Paradise Druid now, but that's fine. The being rank up Sunday. I have two donation decks to do tomorrow. I know my responsibility. Also, but... Um, Yeah, the last couple of times I've played Green White Token hasn't been super impressive with like all the Legion's ends running That's around. Like but I guess there's not as much Legion Legion's end right now, I suppose, as it was like a week or two ago. GG. All right, three and two. Okay, where's our where's our deck? So went three two. Nothing wrong with that. Started off a little slow. Um, it went one and one against the Golos deck, which that deck's really strong. And going one and one against that, I'm I'm happy to do that. And then we saw us overpower some other aggressive decks like Vampires and I don't know, whatever you'd call that Bant Flash deck. Three mana Vivian was incredible against that Bant Flash deck, being able to play our, our creatures at instant speed and everything. But uh, yeah, our deck looked good. We got to see how, how strong Paradise Druid is there with the, the combination of the two Vivians giving Paradise Druid... Vigilance and then also pumping it up, so it's just always hex proof and trample. That's pretty sweet. This is a pretty cool little deck, though. It's a fun one to play. No, there will not be a tier one or or two proliferate deck in War Standard, no, or like in the next standard format, I guess. Um, because we're past War Standard. War Standard was last format. The next format is uh, Throne of Eldraine form standard. Um. Yeah, I like I like Vivian more than Veil of Summer in the sideboard, because Vivian's like really for like the control decks, and I think it's a more impactful card than just a single Veil of Summer, um, and I think we we kind of saw that take place. Um, so yeah, I was like, Veil of Summer is a really good card, but I don't think we can play more spells. And really, with with having trophies, I think it's like I think there's room for two of Duress, Trophy, and Veil of Summer. Like, there's basically, like, six slots that I want for, like, those cards, and we can play two of those. Or if you want to add in Legion's End and you make it three, like, you can, you can there. Like, so, like, between Duress, Legion's End's Trophy, you basically get three of the four of those three or Veil of Summer. And I, I think I like these three that we picked out here. They did pretty good for us. Um... But there we go. All right, so that's Golgari Stompy. So if you're watching later on YouTube, of course, don't forget to the like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate both of those. And also leave a comment. I always like seeing the comments on the YouTube channel as well. But thanks for watching some Golgari Stompy, and I'll see you for the next video. And build your own Carnage Tyrant.